Greetings, imaginative, watery, sacrificing, Pisces. My name is Eliane Nicole. I'm an astrologer and tarot card reader. And now I'm going to do the November 2024 cast for the sign of Pisces. And I'm going to start with a tarot reading. And then in the second half of the video, I'm going to talk about some of the planetary transits. I'm going to do broad strokes on the transits. If you want to know more details on the planetary transits, follow me on Instagram at astrology.tarot.elianenicole, where I do um, daily updates in my stories or else regular updates in my feed about what's going on with the planets as they shift and move and what it all means for us mere mortals here on planet Earth. Um, but as we enter the month of November Pisces, we see the King of Cups reverse. So this is a man, he's out of alignment romantically. Um, and if not out of alignment romantically, then he is out of uh, alignment creatively perhaps. Perhaps his feelings are hurt. Perhaps he's falling out of love. Perhaps he's emotional about something. Perhaps he's creatively blocked. Perhaps he's feeling uninspired. Something like that. And he is covered by the Ten of Wands reversed. So this is um, somebody is, uh, you know, a woman releasing her burdens. Um, and, uh, you know, she's releasing what she's been carrying. And, um, you know, that could be a number of things. Call me for a reading if you want to talk more about what that is, Pisces. <laughs> and um, crossed by the Six of Pentacles. This is, you know, someone who is uh, feeling like things are, you know, it's it, this is about balance. This is about equality. And this is something that Pisces is working on. Um, balance of resources, balance of responsibilities, balance of, uh, you know, masculine and feminine. Um, the foundation of the situation, launching a new hope or desire. What's leaving? Strength. Um, and this doesn't mean a time of being strong is leaving, but it just means that you have always been strong. Um, and it's maybe, this is not, you know, well, this is a time for maybe vulnerability now. What, what could come into being? Justice. This is a, a legal situation working in your favor. If you're not in a literal legal situation, then this is just, you know, a life situation working in your favor, achieving the balance that you're looking for. There's a lot of issues of like balance and equality and fairness. And so it looks like by mid month, you could be, you know, finding that place. What will come into being? Three of Swords reversed, the heart healing. You know, getting over the pain of a loss or a separation of some kind. Fears or insecurities. Seven of Pentacles, reversed. It looks like you've made a decision um, about uh, a business or financial decision that you might be feeling a little insecure about. Others see you. The Page of Wands. So for those of you who have children, um, it looks like, you know, one of your children is, um, you know, inspired by you uh, or possibly looking for your support on a new project or journey they're starting on. For those who don't have children, this could just have to be, have to do with a, a project that you are beginning or a new career path that you're beginning or a new path of any kind, a new start. And um, so others see you making a new start. For those who don't have children, for those who do have children, this is probably related to your child. And um, for and for those who have many children, 
as I do have some Pisces clients who do have many children, it's one of your children, <laughs> I guess. Or maybe just your children in general, the concept of your children. And then um, positive feelings, judgment. So a situation is coming to a head around mid-month. It looks like a situation that you have planted the seeds for a long time ago and it is, it is coming to fruition, it is blooming and um, it looks good for you. And then the outcome, the Ace of Pentacles. At the end of the month, it looks like you are receiving a financial gift possibly or um, just a gift of any kind. It may be an invitation, um, it may be a promotion, it may be a job offer, but it's the Ace of Pentacles. So it's the start of something new in the material realm. And that is the planetary overview I mean, that is the Tarot overview for Pisces. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the planets. As we enter the month of November, we've just come off of the full moon, um, the blue moon of Halloween, and that blue moon happened in the house of communication for Pisces, so there could have been surprise communication. It could have been surprise around a sibling or surprise around a neighbor, something in your neighborhood or local community. Um, because it is that house of the third house for Pisces, rising personality where it emerged. And for Pisces who have children, it could have to do with your child's school. Um, any, anyway, that happened the last day of October, so that's very much the energy that we, we, we are entering November with. And, um, and as I record this, we haven't had the, the, that uh, Uranus, Uranus uh, blue moon surprise yet, because this is... I'm recording this on October 29th, and we're looking at this weekend, Halloween, as the surprise. Anyway, so we enter November with that. November 3rd, Mercury stations direct on Election Day. So, um, you know, if you've been following my videos, you knew already that um, we were predicting that you would not find out uh, who won many of the elections on November 3rd. Um, as uh, Mercury is stationing direct in Libra, you know, we have been dealing with um, the reversal of justice arguments, um, uh, issues with mail, issues with correspondence, issues with lawsuits, all kinds of things that are holding things up. Um, and so I expect that by November 20th, when Mercury returns to the degree that it was when it went retrograde in the first place, that's when we will find out who president is. In the meantime, and in between time, Ceres is going direct in Pisces November 9th. And this is a time for Pisces to really focus on self-care, tender love and care to your body, to yourself. Um, and um, November 10th, Mercury enters Scorpio. So as Mercury enters Scorpio, um, any kind of communication issues, glitches, whatever happened in your Mercury retrograde story October 13th to October 27th is now going to be coming up for review. So if you sign any contracts or made any agreements during this time, that stuff will come up for review now. Um, and um, there may be something you didn't think about. There may be something to amend, to reconsider. You might want to get out of the contract or agreement altogether. Um, November 12th, Jupiter forms the third and final conjunction with Pluto. Um, this conjunction has characterized 2020. It has uh, reflected the surges in the virus. April 4th was the first one. June 30th was the second. This is the third and final. We're expecting a third and final wave. This might be the toughest one as there is also Mars stationing direct uh, on November 13th. The other thing about the Jupiter conjunct Pluto is that it also marks um, surges in, uh, there's the opportunity for expansion of power and wealth um, during this time. There's also, uh, we see the expansion and uh, of conspiracy theories during this time. So Jupiter-Pluto conjunction can reflect all of those things. Um, and um, in the chart of Pisces, it's in your house of friends and business associates. So there's a lot of expansion and um, transformation going on in that area of your life right now. And it's interacting with that Aries in the second house, which is your finances and resources. So whatever your Mars in Aries story was in that house of finances and resources, which is also the house of values and the house of self-worth and self-esteem, um, 
you know, that has been interacting with that house of friends and business associates. That whole story is coming to a crescendo uh, mid-November, and it might be at its worst point, its most heated point, its most boiling point at that time, but then it's going to start to slowly but surely resolve itself. It is a story that will be playing out through the beginning of 2021 for you. And um, November 14th is the new moon in Scorpio. This is a wonderful time for magic. This is a wonderful time to talk to the ancestors. Um, that new moon in Scorpio is um, emerging in your ninth house. This is the house of higher truth, of philosophy, religion, spirituality. It's also the house of travel and exploration. It can be the house of cross-cultural experiences or broadcasting or publishing where that's applicable. So it's great to set intentions around any of those topics that I just listed off, as well as any Scorpio topics, which are elimination, uh, regeneration, rebirth, transformation, um, also anything to do with other people's money, wills, inheritances, um, settlements, loans, investors, donors, um, all of that kind of stuff. Great to set intentions around under the very cosmic and rich fertile soil of the new moon of Scorpio. November 20th, Mercury is out of shadow finally from the retrograde period. Again, this is when I think we will know the results of the elections. Um, and uh, November 21st, Venus enters Scorpio. As Venus enters Scorpio, it is moving into your ninth house. Um, this is going to be a time when you are attracted to um, you know, people, places, things, experiences of a very deeply and profound spiritual nature. Maybe you will be more attracted to the occult, to the unseen, um, to the darker side of things, to the mysteries of life. This is for the rest of the month. Also, the sun is entering Sagittarius. When the sun enters Sagittarius, it's, it's entering your house of career and attainment. And also, this is your, if you are not a person who has a career, this could be your house of uh, reputation, uh, how you're seen in the world. And um, uh, Sun in Sagittarius brings a lot of optimism and faith and hope for the future, I think, for the collective. After having gone through some of the toughest astrology of the year, um, there's a sense of, you know, catharsis and rebirth and regeneration um, and new hope, I think. Um, Neptune is going direct November 28th, and uh, that is, um, I think, an underestimated, uh, under-talked about player in the pandemic story. But I do believe that slowly but surely the cloud, we are going to start to see the COVID cloud being lifted. And um, I don't think we are fully out of that cloud until March 21st, 2021, when Neptune returns to the degree that it was uh, when it went retrograde in the first place in 2020. But I relate, the Neptune is related, I don't. Uh, Neptune has always been related to, uh, astrologers relate Neptune to vaccines, to medicine, um, and things like that. Um, so, as well as deception and things of that nature, which has also been an underlying side story with this whole pandemic um, situation. So, and then November 30th, the full moon and prenumbral lunar eclipse in Gemini. This is in your house of home, Pisces. Um, it's also the house of legacy, the house of the parents, um, the house of the ancestors. So it could manifest in any of those topics or all of those topics, depending. Um, but um, eclipses bring culminations. They also bring illumination. Um, lunar eclipses can bring out the shadow in ourselves or others in that area, um, which can be shocking, but that happens so that it can be seen, acknowledged, integrated, and we can, you know, um, just live embodied whole lives, right? And um, so thank you for joining me, Pisces. That is the end of my forecast. If you liked it, please give me a like. If you didn't like it, please give me a don't like, but I hope you do like it. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Please share this video with other Pisces that you know. 
And please follow me on Instagram at astrology.tarot.elianenicole. There I do more regular updates about the planetary transits as they're unfolding in a more detailed way because I just did very broad strokes here to touch on things that are happening in the sky. And, um, and of course, um, I encourage you to contact me directly for your own personal tailor-made birth chart and transit reading and tarot reading. That's how you get the most out of the planets and out of the cards. And uh, thank you so much for joining me, Pisces. It's always such an accomplishment once I make it to your video because you're always number 12 each month and it's a, it is quite a feat. So thank you for listening. It means so much to me. And um, I love to share this um, joy of mine, this interest of mine with others. Um, and have a wonderful, wonderful November, Pisces. You have made it through if you've made it to November, uh, after mid-November, we've been through the toughest astrology of 2020. So congratulations, we are survivors. And uh, that is saying a lot for this year. So congratulations, have a great November.